what the hell's going on with Bungie? Why, uh, let's talk about Bungie. We have a whole report going on over at IGN, uh, written up by Rebecca Valentine, talking about the general disarray that's happening um, over at Bungie and the problems they're having bringing their various projects together. Um, I did know that this comes after Bungie laid off around 100 employees last October, um, and there are various conversations um, surrounding their efficiency as a live service studio. Destiny 2's fan base is fractured over how the expansion Lightfall went and how the final shape's marketing has been received across the last few months. Um, and they were also um, semi-responsible for shutting down Last of Us Factions multiplayer. Apparently, Sony internally had them as some sort of review board for various other live service projects, and the outcome of that was shutting down The Last of Us. Um, they did apparently help with their, with Helldivers 2, which is obviously a yep. resounding success. Um, but right now, um, you know, we have the whole thing that's going on with Marathon, where it's meant to be an extraction shooter, but apparently that's really struggling to come together. And part of this report is that an internal leaker has said that nothing adds up in regards to the, um, the funding of the studio itself, the literal financial of where the money's going and coming, um, you know, in terms of getting that thing over the finish line. Um, and so apparently that was already shelved and then resumed across the last four years. And now we've got um, ex-Riot developer Joe Ziegler taking over from Christopher Barrett as the project director to try and get something over the finish line. But apparently the general sensibility internally is that management just want to get something done and apparently they want to cash out. Internally, um, it's thought that Bungie's current figureheads are planning to leave in 2026 once the money from Sony's 2022 acquisition completes. So they're just trying to literally go buy the book. Let's just get something done. Yeah. Um, but apparently the way that it's all coming together is on fire. What a strange studio, man. Mm. Like, I think for the past 10 years, if not longer, this studio has been a huge question mark because on this pa on paper, mm. you know, it's, it's Bungie, the creators of Halo, the creators of Destiny who ushered in this live service era that we're currently living yeah. in, for better or worse, you know, have made huge innovations in the gaming world. Sony buys them, feels like a huge coup, feels like a huge bounce back towards Xbox and their acquisition spree. Mm. And then it's gotten to the point where, honestly, I forget Sony even owns Bungie. Like, because you haven't done anything with think, them. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, you've advertised the Destiny expansions on the store. And admittedly, when, you know, Sony actually bought Bungie, they said Bungie's going to remain independent. We're not mm. going to meddle too much. But has that worked out? Has it been worth the money? I just <sighs> think you look at the $200 million and change that Sony paid for Insomniac. And mm. you look at the three billion plus that um, they paid for Bungie and <laughs> one was a great deal and one absolutely hasn't been so far. There is like a whole um, email thing doing the rounds as well. It's been reported by various uh, Destiny 4 like, um, community people, like YouTube channels, etc., cetera, um, talking more about the general um, <laughs> unfavorable state that um, Bungie's in and the general state that Destiny's in and the, the way that they're treating that stuff. Um, and for a while, like if you've followed Destiny stuff or um, you know Bungie fandom stuff, it has been a lot of what the hell is going on at that studio. There was always an assumption. I think that the way the Halo went after they stopped doing, obviously, Halo Reach, it got passed over to 343, and then people go back and forward on Halo 4. Nearly everybody hates Halo 5. Um, Halo Infinite launched in a horrific state. It got there eventually. Halo Master Chief Collection launched in a horrible state. Four years later, it's much better. But I think that because there was so much ire directed at 343, justifiably, it's not like those games launched better than they did, um, it let the reputation of Bungie stay intact. Hmm. Whereas if you were following certain people saying... Bungie have had problems at the management level for a long time. Bungie have had problems trying to bring stuff together for a long time. Um, Jason Trier's own book, uh, Blood, Sweat and Pixels, goes into the original Destiny and how much of a mess that thing was. Um, and maybe now that they are, they were acquired, they've got more sort of um, you know impetus on turning things over and they've got a bigger spotlight on them than ever, it's more obvious where the holes are. Yeah, man. I mean, you mentioned Jason Schreier's... Jason Schreier. I always uh, struggle... Struggle to not go Sean Connery. Jay Schreier. Pronouncing that, pronouncing his name. Uh, uh, but yeah, his book is incredible. And I remember reading that when it came out, I think it was 2016 or 2017, and reading about the production of Destiny, thinking, how can this happen to a studio yeah. this big? You know, it, it, you, I'd recommend you definitely go read it. But, you know, he talks in that section about how they had didn't even know if they wanted to make a third-person fantasy game or a first-person sci-fi game for years. They threw the script out for Destiny mm. less than a year, I think it was, before... Sorry, I've not read this book in a while, but I'm pretty sure it was uh, less than a year before the game was even oh, was very last about minute. to launch, and they had to completely rewrite it, which is why the story in the game at launch felt so threadbare. Just like these dodgy managerial positions that you would have assumed were made very early on in development, but were just in flux all the way through, and... 
I don't, I don't want to defend big studios like Activision or even Sony and Microsoft, mm-hmm. right? But I look at Bungie's history. They were partnered with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. They celebrated when they went independent. They partnered with Activision. They celebrated when they went independent. Now they're partnering with Sony and it's not working again. Mm-hmm. This is a studio that seemingly can't function on its own, but can't function with anyone else. And it, at, at a certain point, you just have to kind of wonder like what's going on internally then like something yeah. must be wrong because these studio acquisitions and these studio divorces like they don't happen all the time mm. and it's happened three times now with Ooh. um bungie i remember thinking it was ridiculous when yeah when they left when they managed to um leave activision and retain the destiny ip that was a whole thing where the internal report was that they were popping champagne corks and they were freaking out that they got free so when they then got bought by sony it was like why yeah isn't your end goal to be the self-sustaining thing unless there's acquisition money on the cards. And that makes more sense for the people at the top who don't care about the games on the bottom. Um, and it's, it's been fascinating watch, watching Bungie for the last 10 years. As someone who grew up with Halo, like from the very, very beginning, like they were gods. Like the Halo's run, I, to me, maybe it's nostalgia talking or whatever, even though I think it's legally correct. <laughs> that game's run was unmatched. Like it just was. Halo 3 is the peak, etc. cetera. And um, that was all them. Like you watch those making of documentaries, they were bearing their soul. Like everyone from the top to the bottom, everyone was bang on. And, uh, and you had the specific people that were involved, like Joseph Staten or whoever. And um, now they're a cold, cold company. Like mm. you get bits and pieces. Um, sometimes, I forget what the name, their old community manager was called Luke someone. Um, but you get bits and pieces of people coming through, humans coming through, telling you what's going on about their project, but it's nowhere near what it was in the 2000s. And uh, it's interesting just looking at the way that it's all shaken out um, because there's still, a lot of, obviously there's a lot of talent there. Clearly the games wouldn't play so well if they didn't. I get the problems with updates, etc. But the whole thing with Destiny, the reason that it didn't get buried is because the gameplay was immaculate. Yeah. Like back in 2014, everyone hated Destiny overall, but it played so well at the core and it was always like, there's something here. And then it influenced so so many games. It did, yeah. And it lasted for so long. Um, but it's just, I, I feel like you can see the art departments, the coders, et cetera, um, working underneath this structure that doesn't support them. I've always questioned the acquisition on Sony's front because, hmm. you know, part of the reason, if not the reason why they bought Bungie was to help the wider Sony and PlayStation ecosystem deliver live service games, right? They kind mm. of bought them for that expertise as much as they did their own um, future games or Destiny or anything like that. But to be honest, like, they've had some successes, of course. They turned Destiny around. Destiny mm. 2 had really great periods, but it's also had down periods. And I just kind of think, is that as good as we can get in the <laughs> live service space? You know what I mean? Like, ah, say what you will about Bungie, I think they've made a lot of errors. And it's not like they've now perfected the formula. As no, we no. record this, you know, Destiny 2 and the, its latest expansions is currently enduring backlash. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think... For me, anyway, they weren't the framework as successful as they were to build a live service structure Mm. around anyway. You know, I said it when Factions was cancelled in part because apparently Bungie took a look at it and said, oh, we need to change this, need to do that. And I'm like, to be honest, I kind of want to see just what Naughty Dog's version of a live service would be. Because I know what... Bungie's version of a live service is, and a lot of people like it. It's not personally for me, but mm. why does it have to be just one way? I know they're successful. Totally. I know it's an incredibly difficult subgenre and section of the industry to break into and make money in. But like, and I get it. I understand why Sony would buy them for that. But like, it's we can do better, surely. <laughs> like, why is it their way or the highway almost? You yeah, know? which was the way that it kind of came across. It's interesting looking at something like Hell Divers Two. Be absolutely incredible. And obviously, that game was in development for like eight years or whatever. Um, but I still maintain that Sony didn't know what they had with that thing, and mm. um, they would have put way more marketing behind it. Like they were the ones pointing at foam stars while Hell Hell Divers blew up underneath it. Um, and so I, yeah, I wondered just what those actual conversations were. Like um, Bungie are mentioned in regards to Hell Divers too, mainly just because it's a live live service game. Um, alongside when Bungie were appointed this internal review board thing. But it is interesting, or it would be interesting, what those conversations were. Like some Naughty Dog team with some Bungie team going like, this won't work, what plans have you got, et cetera. Um, And then struggling to bring it all together. But either way, I feel like the general reception for Marathon wasn't sky high. There was a a bit of a groundswell of people who just hate the idea of an extraction shooter. I don't feel like I've played enough of them to to care one way or the other, but I do feel like there is a bit of a conversation on extraction shooters or the new Battle Royale, like the new Mm. thing that everyone tries to do one of. And another part of this, um, 
conversation on uh, Marathon is that idea that they're not going to be they're going to be doing something more like Overwatch, where it's more individual character builds as opposed to an overall series of things you can pick from to build you to make your own character. So, I uh, that didn't work out very well for Battlefield 2042. It or really did. Anyone actually, other yeah. than Overwatch? It so. didn't even really work out for COD. I mean, that's what <laughs> specialists in the game, or mm-hmm. depending on which sub series you play, but even that kind of reverted back. Yeah, I forgot about Black Ops. 4. I know, right? I oh know. my god, I think Treyarch forgot about Black Ops. Sweet. Photo was the end. Lord. Um, yeah, with Bungie's sort of future, I just think, again, on paper, the acquisition should have been a home run. You get this beloved developer in mm. who owns this massive franchise, who has all of this expertise in two genres Sony doesn't focus on, those being live services until recently, of course, mm. and first person shooters. Like that should bolster their portfolio so much. Mm. And it just kind of hasn't. And it's been a couple of years, and I know these things take a long time, and we haven't seen a marathon, you know, beyond that first trailer, really. And the proof will be in the pudding and that. But, like, again, I go back to other acquisitions that Sony has made, and I think Insomniac's made, like, five great yeah. games in that time and has gone from strength to strength. And They were a steal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Bungie... For as big as they are, I just, what's going on, man? That's the thing. The wider conversation, the wider amount of leaked documents, et cetera, is that, general, is that conversation that Sony are unhappy with the purchase, that like it hasn't worked out in regards to trying to hoover up the ex-Halo devs um, and doing something with them. But yeah, we're yet to see um, how it all shakes out. But Scott, at the minute, not very good. Isn't it kind of crazy? And I know Jim Ryan's left, but with all of these <laughs> layoffs and stuff, it's, it's crazy to me that someone can decide to buy a company mm. for billions of dollars mm-hmm. and try to pivot the other company that they own, the main company, around what they do, in this case, right. live services, and then decide that's not the way, pivot completely <laughs> in a different direction, uh-huh. and then still kind of just leave their job nice. <laughs> and, or, or probably, of course, would have been allowed to stay on, and then everyone else gets you know laid off. And it's yeah. like... Whose fault is this, it's really? It's not the people <laughs> making the games. So you're sort of like tipping a bucket out and then just being like, that's your mess now because yeah, yeah. I've left the room. So you've got to make that pick up, Pick them up. <laughs> just, just deal with it. 